Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Open Road Podcast. Today, I have a guest, another special guest, because all my guests are they're pretty special. Uh, Paul Alvarez, welcome to the podcast. How you doing, bro? I'm doing good, my brother. How about yourself? I'm doing, dude. Uh, we've been trying to get this podcast going uh, for a bit. No? For a bit, man. A couple months now. Yeah. It finally <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank you for coming out and uh, taking the time to do this podcast. Like, badass. Um, but before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to Marcos for letting us use this place. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Nancy for the food. That shit was good. It was the bomb. Carne guisada, and arroz, and some tortillas. Mm. Mm. Man. Mm. It was good. And I'm talking about good. Quinceañera uh, good. Oh, uh, boda good, dude. <laughs> oh, no, we done moved up on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> we're going to open it up and... Uh, I met you, man, but how many years ago, man? So it's probably been, man, 10 or 11 years, man. At, at, it was at a party somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was at one but of the parties and then one uh, of the get togethers. I think we, somebody's house. We clicked right away just after you, you know, the vet thing, right? Yeah. And yeah. I that was pretty cool. And, uh, so how long did you do? Uh, I think you're the first vet we have on the podcast, I want to say. Oh, yeah. You haven't had any of your friends on? Nah. No? No, no vets. Not, so, not so, so far. Yeah. So, you were in Marine Corps? Marine Corps, eight years. Okay. Yes, you sir. went Paris Island or MCRD? MCRD. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and, and uh, yeah, where, would. where the real Marines go? <laughs> <laughs> Damn right, baby. <laughs> where the real Marines go. <laughs> Can't get it straight. <laughs> yeah. So, you did eight years? Yes, sir. What was your MOS? MOS was 3531, Motor T. Motor T. Okay. Yes, okay. sir. If you can't truck it, fuck it. <laughs> That's the motto, man. That's good stuff. So you did eight years. Did you do any tours? Nah, no tours, brother. Okay. What uh, years I were you in? Side, man. I was in from uh, 80, 88 through 95. Fuck. I was born in 85. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but hey. once a Marine, always a Marine, baby. Yes, right? sir. So Semper Fi. Yeah, no. rah, rah, rah. yeah, there's no former Marine. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's just, always a Marine. Yeah, always a Marine, baby. Yes, yeah. sir. It's like uh, one of the biggest fraternities in the world. The, the bees and the best, man. The true one percenters. Right. Cheers to that, brother. Cheers, brother. So tell me, how how has the Marine Corps helped you in your life? Has it? Man, the Marine Corps helped me uh, a lot, brother. Really? You know, my younger, my younger years were crazy. You know, didn't know what I was doing, didn't know where I was going. Uh, soon your year in high school, my dad asked me, hey, man, you know, getting ready to graduate what are you gonna do i was like i don't know pop i was just about to party and hanging out with the fellas yeah, yeah. i didn't you know i didn't have a plan for what was happening after high school you know uh, working at mcdonald's and stuff making minimum wage and didn't have a thought of what was going on that's when when he brought that up is when i started like well man what am i gonna do right didn't know what i was gonna do you know i you know, working at McDonald's, didn't really know a real job. Oh, shit. So, man, one day, man, I was walking at Golfgate Mall. When Golfgate Mall was still around, the recruiting station was in there. I passed by the Marine Corps recruiter, looked in there. I was like, yeah, looks fascinating. Kept going through the mall. On the way back out, looked in there again, and I said, man, let me go in here and just see what's up with here, man. Walked in there. Recruiter started pitching. I was like, man, where do I sign? He says, you got to take an ASVAP test, this and that. I said, schedule it. They Let's scheduled go. it, man. A couple of days later, he came, called me back, saying, all right, man, you want to come and list? I said, sure. Went back over there, signed the paperwork, came back and told my pop. And he's like, you going to tell your mom? I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> you going to tell her? He goes, no, you did it. You tell her. So I told her, and, you know, that I enlisted, bro. And yeah. boom, shipped out, you know, graduated high school. Uh, so June 2nd, I reported to uh, boot camp. Is all she wrote from there, man. I mean, they stru they taught me structure, you know, discipline, responsibility, man. There was no more who's washing my clothes. Mom was, you know, been at home. Mom took care of everything, cooked for you. Tolpeo, bro. That shit's over. There, it's over, brother. You know, it was you. You know, had to wash my own stuff, had to feed myself, you know, and basically learn what it was to actually, you know, have responsibilities, man. And, you know, graduating boot camp and going, you know, leaving home was, was, was a big step, man, mm -hmm. and, and an eye-opener. You know, it helped me develop, you know, responsibility skills and leadership skills, you know, which has helped me tremendously through life, man. It's helped me, you know, get to where I'm at now. What did you think of boot camp, man? I'll tell you one thing that I thought. I thought it was the funniest fucking place to be at where you couldn't fucking laugh, right? Because, like, 
but everything was fucking <laughs> hilarious, dude. Like, <laughs> it was, man, because it, it was it was like uh, it was like oh shit, but then it was funny, right? Because when they were fucking with somebody else, you wanted to bust out laughing, bro, it was but you couldn't, fucking man. Funny, dude. Like it was, man. You know, it was good times. It was like, oh, there were some fun times at boot camp. Cause yeah, like the part is you can't laugh, right? Yeah, like, you know, you gotta what, you gotta be hard. Uh, you know, no matter what, man, that drill instructor's in your face or whatever. If you if you think it's funny what he's telling you, you're like, oh shit, I can't bust out laughing. And they want to make you laugh too to break you oh, down yeah, and. Oh, yeah make you push but yeah man that was the good part about it man was man I would, holding it i would fail dude like i'd fucking laugh <laughs> thank god i never did man oh no oh, dude man. i saw a lot of quarter deck time because of that shit i just couldn't help it dude like i thought shit was fucking hilarious when they would just fuck people up yeah uh awesome shit yeah so you you go through boot camp and then you attend mct uh yeah 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 gotcha yeah. gotcha yeah. gotcha and that's it went to uh went to santa Ana Frey okay and stuff yeah mm -hmm. You know, of course, boot camp, came home for two weeks, and then back to, uh, you know, SOI. Yeah. So, yeah, in Santa Ana Frey. And then where'd so, you get stationed after that? So, after that, I went to I went to North Carolina. Oh. Yeah, Jacksonville, North Carolina. How's that? Yeah, it was fun, brother. Really? It, it, it was, you know, it was out in the boonies. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a lot of the, the, well, not all the Marine Corps bases, because there ain't too many. Right, right. But, you know, this one was, you know, it was out in the boonies, kind of like 29 Palms version. You know, of the East Coast, yeah. where it was out in the woods and stuff, man. Closest town was Jacksonville, you know. God. So it was a little town you'd go to and party in the two bars that they had there and stuff, man. <laughs> you know, did had a good time there, man. You know, about two years, two years there and stuff, yeah. man. And then wound up back in Oceanside Ooh. just there for another two years. You, you ever visit the Purple Chapel? Oh, that, yeah. That existed back then? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> everything's probably existed forever for the Marine Corps, bro. <laughs> Purple Chapel. Yeah. Oh God. Yep. Good stuff, man. Yeah, man. Good stuff. Yep. And then my last my last duty station, man, which is the longest stint, man, was the was Hawaii where I finished up, man. Three years, man, in paradise, bro. Yeah. Three years in paradise, man. And they have a lot of like um what the fuck they call them things that come in? Um where they everybody's got a bunker down in the fucking barracks where it gets all crazy. There's like, oh, oh the tsunamis. Tsunamis, that's yeah. what they call it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I went through two of them while I was there, oh, man. Shit. Two tsunamis and stuff, man. And it's it, it crazy, man. It's, yeah. You still you talk know. to any of those guys or no? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I keep in touch. There's about fifteen of us, man, that oh, keep in touch cool. still, man. Badass. It's there from from you know, from the days in in, in uh in all of them, man. All, everywhere I went, man, total of fifteen of us that you know, even though we weren't connected at the same bases and stuff, man, uh, we'd all, you know, all chat online. And we start having just, you know, like uh, Teams meetings or Skype and stuff and then include a hey, so-and-so. And so everybody's, hey, man, si, si. so yeah. we all, you know, became close friends, man. So, yeah. you know, guys that we didn't meet, you know, that never met, met, we, you know, buddied up because, you know, the Marine yeah. Corps, bro. Yeah. Once you start talking to a devil dog and we're cool, it's, it's on, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a party. You guys, so. have you done a reunion any type of way? So we haven't done a reunion, man. We're talking about doing one this upcoming year, man, uh, back in Hawaii. Yeah. Bill, you know, some of the guys got to get permission and stuff, man. You know? <laughs> Not everybody you can know, be a yeah. real man anymore. You know, it's kind of like you're letting dudes that together that were in their, ninth, in their, in their, in their teens to their 20s partying, and you want to let them go on their own to Hawaii for a week? Oh, don't know how that was going to work. So, But we're trying to put something together, man. Yeah. You know, definitely, man. So. I've been doing some reunions with my guys uh, from my second tour. Yeah. So we've done two reunions so far. We did one in Colorado like two years ago. And then I think like two, three, no, maybe a month ago, two months ago, we did one in, uh, in Austin. And uh, good turnouts, man. I think the first one, at least 50 some dudes came in. Yeah. And then uh, on the second one, man, I want to say probably about 30. You yeah. know, not everybody can make this one. But so now we're trying to do a reunion every two years now. Man, it's, it's so cool, dude. Like, so we, the first one we went to Colorado, man, and like, Oh, the first night, I think we we had like some brewery scheduled or whatever, and we're there for a couple hours or whatever. And then like everybody gets a bright idea, we're gonna go bar hopping, you know. Bar. <laughs> that and, worked. And out. We were, I think we were in Denver or something. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was Denver. And oh, dude, so we're rolling fifty deep to these bars, man. Ooh, God we're damn, fucking, bro. Dude, we get there, we own that bar. It's it's a done deal. There's people fucking everywhere. And then uh, as the night progressed, man, like you know, fucking Marines being Marines, fucking. People getting shitty, you Got know. Got a little rowdy. So there were some bouncers at one of them, and they're like, y'all can't come in here. And this one fucking guy's like, you see how many it is of us? Like, we're coming in. You don't have the staff to keep us out. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that one. He's like, look, but we're going to take care of each other. Like, if somebody starts fucking up, we'll take care of them. Everything's going to be all right. 
man, that guy had no choice, man. He's like, all right, man, come on. Come on through. Oh, man, we were fucking bars up, dude. It was <laughs> good times, dude. <laughs> yeah, man, it was good times, man. You know, yeah. back in the days, you know, Marines, all they did was party hard, dude. Dude, that's all yeah. it was, man. I mean, yeah. you when drink beer. At the minute you got off, if you could wait that long, yeah. right? 12 back yeah. at night. Once, minimum, minimum. Yeah, once boot camp was over, bro. And you got st- wherever you got stationed. Every day after work was was a drink fest. Yeah. That's all it was, yeah. man. And you then Thursdays nobody was sleep. Oh, you feel day Thursday <laughs> trying to clean it and making a mess while you're yeah. cleaning because you're just getting drunk. <laughs> That's how it was. The rooms are supposed to be spotless clean, and you're just getting fucked up throwing beer cans yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, you don't sleep because then you're like, oh shit, I did all this shit. And it's like three in the morning. You got to clean again. And yeah. Again. yeah, it's nuts. A little party, man. Have yeah, a good time. So you left the Marine Corps, and then. How, what did you do when you got out, man? Like, what was your transition out? You know, because it's not easy, right? Like, yeah. re- whether you've been to combat or not, if you've been any type of military, and I'm not sure about the Air Force, because that's yeah. whatever, right? Like, <laughs> I love you guys if you are Air Force, whatever, but. But your pansies. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I see it a lot with Marines and Army guys. They, they kind of have a, even the Navy guys, right? Because, you yeah. know, they're on ship a lot, and, like, yeah. that transition out, how did that play out for you? Man, that, that transition, it, it is hard, bro, because you come from, you know, the thing about the, the military, bro, the Marine Corps, everything's structured, bro. Even though, you know, everybody's got a job and it's got to get done. Everybody parties hard, toto, pero boom. You're told to do this. There's no, man, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Man, I'm going to call in sick. There ain't none of that, bro. It's boom. Every day, bro, you got to be at work no matter what. You, you call in sick, you go to sick bay, and if they tell you you got light duty, won't give a fuck. Get back over here, you get back to work. Yeah. And so you come out here, man, you pick up a job, you know, you tell somebody, hey, man, that other, like, man, fuck that, bro, I'm man, I'm going to call in sick, man. You look around, it's like, man, there's no structure. Yeah. There's no, you know, you know, if you're my, my corporal, my sergeant, you know, staff sergeant, if you told me to do something, it's on. Okay, got you, sir. Yeah, no problem. You come out here, they're like, man, fuck this dude, man. That motherfucker <laughs> thinks he's the shit. Da-da, you know, and it's like, man, you know. In other right. words, man, you go to a job, man, it's like, fuck, bro. You know, yeah. you're used to the structure that everybody had a job. You had the job. You had a job. If I didn't do my job, your job wasn't going to work. All right. And out in the real world, is motherfuckers don't care. And you know, and that's a hard transition coming into, uh, you know, the civilian work life of there's really no structure. But you did well, though, right? Because you went in right to, to where you're at now still, right? Well, or? no. So when I got out of the Marine Corps, man, so I, went, I went to unemployment. You know, couldn't get a job. I was trying to get on with another government job, trying to get on with the post office at that time, trying to get on with DPS, tried to get on with the police department. But at that time, man, in, in you know, in the 90s, they weren't hiring like they do now and stuff, man. So it was hard. You know, you had to know somebody to get in. Right. So I was unemployment for a little bit, man, and started picking up little peddly jobs. My first real job wound up being in Nabisco. There used to be a Nabisco here on on uh, on Holcomb. Oh, right. Shit. Right across from the grocery supply. Huh. They said, now there's an apartment complex there, a big apartment complex, but that used to be a Nabisco cookie company. Mm. So I went to work for them, man, and then they laid me off because they closed and the plant was moving to Mexico. So, boom, I got laid off. Boom, unemployment again. Shit, fuck it, party down for a little while on unemployment, <laughs> going to casinos and stuff, man. But then, you know, that unemployment only lasts so long. And uh, so I'd already had, uh, I had three kids already, right? Now, so, what, were you married in the Marine Corps? So I got married while I was in the Marine Corps. Okay. My oldest daughter was born in Hawaii when I was stationed there. Oh, you know, oh, okay. And then my two youngest from my first marriage were born here. Mm-hmm. That. So, of course, you know, hey, unemployment only goes so far, man. You yeah. know, I had saved up a little bit of money, but that's, that stuff ran pretty quick. So I was like, God damn it, I got to get a job. So looked and hustled, and then wound up getting with uh, Dryer's Grand Ice Cream. Hmm. So I kind of was in the food industry, in other words, right? And there was an ice cream company. On Clay and Campbell over off of 290, that used to be the old boarding plant. And uh, Drivers of Ice Cream bought them out, and I worked for them for five years and stuff. And that was, you know, that was the longest job I'd held since after I got out of the Marine Corps, right? I was with them. And then in 2000 is when I got an opportunity to go on to AT&T. Nice. And, you know, been working with them for 23 years and stuff, man. And, and this was a little more similar to the military because it's unionized. Gotcha. So union is, is structured. You know, everybody has a job. And it's so it was a little more okay. I can see the military out of it because yeah, it's structured. You know, everybody's got a job to do. It's got you know, responsibilities. But you know, I've been rolling with them for 23 years, man. And, and you know, gracias a Dios, brother. I've moved up in this company. You know, pretty high up, man. Good. You man. know, with just a high school diploma, man. That's you know, but I, again, that goes back to what the military taught me of responsibility. Of man, I do my job 150 percent. Right. There's no, 
hey man this is my job and that's it i've always like man show me what you do bro yeah you know and it's about like the military man i mean i got your back if you got my back and we learn what we do because we got to click yeah we got to work together man and it's it's you know all that you know what, what i learned from the military and there was you know the 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 just the responsibility, man, and the fucking I'm locked and motivated for everything that I do, you know, and just it's helped me in 23 years, man, flying. Now, I've known you for less 10 plus years, right? Yeah, 10 plus years because we met a couple years before my dad passed. So yeah, 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 yeah I remember that. Um, yeah. And I think I think we we get into the family part of your life now, right? So all that structure, you know. You're pretty fucking locked on, not just at work, right? I, you know, I get to see how you are with your family, with just your brother-in-law, which is my cousin, whatever, you know, yeah. your sister, you know, Nancy and all that. Like, you're a go-to guy that can be counted on, and, you know, you're a reliable fucking person, human being. So, I think your parents also have that, maybe that structure was given to you even yeah. before the military, right? Like, yeah. Like, just my perception on, like, what I saw, you know? And I remember, man, I'd go party at your fucking, I'd go, I'd be working the streets. There's a barbecue way in this, you know. At my mom's house, yeah. yeah. My mom's house with the get together, <laughs> man. You know, like when you're young, man, everybody was, hey, man, Paul's house. You know, that's where the party's happening, bro. You know. Yeah, those were good and, times, And we'd man. party there, man, till yeah. three or four in the morning. And I think that's how we just, you know. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I met all your family, but I, maybe it's a Marine thing or just the way you're fucking just, like, you're motivated, dude, like. I've I've never seen you down, um, but I know that there's been things in your life that probably tore you up. Yeah, there has, man. You know, I, I you know, no matter what, man. I've always, I try to keep myself stiff for mm -hmm. my family, man. Just man, strong or that. But yeah, you know, I lost my dad nine years ago to cancer, and that was, you know, that was an unexpected. You know, it wasn't like you know, yeah, he's been sick for a long time. It, it within six months of him being diagnosed with cancer, he was gone. Damn. You know, and it was it was you know. It was quick, so you know, you expect to see your parents, you know, grow to an old age. You know, life is, yeah, you know, they're gonna give you hitos, and and it's accepted that, hey man, they're gonna pass as they get older. When, boom, they tell you, hey man, he's sick, and then six months later, you're like, fuck, he's not even you know, sick. That, he's just that's gone. hard, bro. Cause like you said, my dad was 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 our rock. I mean, you know, my dad showed me a lot of my responsibility that I do have, man. Everybody that knows my dad, you know, was like, my dad would give you the shirt off his back. My dad was like, man, if he can help you, he's going to help you. And I'm the same way, man. It's just like, help, always help others, man. That's my biggest thing. My dad man, and my mom have showed us all that, you know. But when he got sick, man, it was like, and it hit me, yeah. you know. And, you know, it, it was, that was the first time I really let my, my family see me cry. Right. You know, when my, my dad passed, you know, because, you know, guys, you know, I'm, I'm the badass motherfucker and shit, man. You know, I've had shit happen. It's like, go off on my own, boom, but it was like, man, when, when. But my dad, it was like, you know, I'm gonna let everybody see, see who me. I am, yeah. man. You know, yeah. you know, even even the strongest people could break down. Yeah. You know, but I still, you know, I lost my son two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And that one really, so that one hit me. You know, I, I want to get into that one a little deeper. Okay. Um, I think it's time for for a wrench. You need yeah, a wrench. we need a we need a wrench out of the toolbox. That's right. Let me, let me so. grab them real quick. Actually. I got my, my Jamie's gonna go ahead and get us two drinks. I appreciate you, man. All the hard work you you fucking put out here, man. My little brother's the one sets up all this stuff for me, man. Like the guy's a fucking thank mini, you, sir. Mini genius, you know. Yeah. He may not look it because you know he fucking looks crazy, but he, he's, he's a, a good, good bartender too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Like the way he slid that beer over. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, your son, man. Um, Okay, so you've you've lost your 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 dad and your son. Yes, right? um, I can imagine the dad part. Even though we don't expect it, we expect it. Right? Yeah, like you know, they're gonna go before we go. Yeah, um, yeah. but not your son, right? Correct. It's you know, you know, it's like anybody who experiences that man is. You should never have to bury a child. You know, the child's always supposed to bury their parents right. at some point. You know, it's not the other way around. Yeah. You know, and it's, you know, my son, my son took his own life. You know, uh, he had struggled with depression for a long time. You know, we tried to help him, man, but all just, you know, he tried to do everything he can, but it just didn't work, you know, whatever we were trying. And, and he took his own life two years ago, man. And that one, that one knocked me down, man. That yeah. one, that one put me down for a little while and stuff, man. And, and it's the same thing, man. You know, 
uh, I put up a front for everybody, man. But in the background, you know, I'd hurt on my own. I, I'm kind of somebody that I don't like to be a burden. Right. So, you know, I, I try to push through my stuff by myself, you know. And, and I do know that if I do need help, you know, I will talk to somebody. But I kind of, to a point, you know, I, you know, I'm going to give it to my cuñado, man, right here, too. You know, uh, his, his faith, just talking to me, right. you know, kept me leveled. You know, I'm not a, a – and we had this conversation, you know, <coughs> last week about faith, man. It's like, you know, I know there's something out there, dude, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what is. You know, you know there's religion, you know, and, and to me it's like there are so many religions out there. You know, there's one religion, you know, the religions that don't believe in God. You know, don't believe in this. So what is really out there? You know, I know something's out there, you know, but what it is, I don't know. Right. But it's one of those, you know, when I feel down, I'll talk to my son. Or I'll talk to my dad. Yeah. And it helps me. You know, like, okay, good. You know, because I, I can feel it when I get, man, I, I'll get a feeling that, man, I just, I get down. H- how old was your son? My son was uh, 26. Now. Yeah. Just, you know, I, I've never talked to you about this before. Um you said, you know, we tried everything. Yeah. We, we did everything. Is that part of you that maybe feels like maybe a little guilt that you, you, you could have done more? Or like, I know it's hard to, 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 to have this conversation, but is that yeah. what you're feeling? Or, or So I say everything, but don't really know if I did do everything. Okay. You know, that's one of the things that gets you as a parent when something like that happens is what could have I done different? You go back and analyze everything you did and like, what could have I done different to, to change it? You 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 start putting your own scenarios together, you know, because gotcha. well, what if I would have done this? You know, the what ifs. Gotcha. You know, shit. Did I do this? Why didn't I do it if I didn't? You know, if you think of something, well, man, I didn't try this. You know, because we come from from you know, the the Latinos. You know, back in the day, like man, if you were depressed, ah, la loco, la loco, you know. So way, we yeah. come from yeah. families like that. That, you know, the don't Latino race, it. they don't accept that. they you know the depression. You know, so it's, you know, it wasn't something that I had dealt with before, you know, and yeah, I'd never sat down and talked with my parents about it. Uh, you know, hey, man, mom, we're, you know, they knew we were having problems with my son, but never like, man, you know, he's depressed. You never, never took it to my parents thinking that, you know, maybe, you know, they're going to think, man, you're not doing your job as a parent. Right. You know, but also. As a parent, you want to try to do what's best for your for your for your kids, mm-hmm. but it it was it's one of those things, man. That today, even today, I'll sit sometimes and like, man, what could have I done different, you know, to to have prevented that? Right, but I think you, you know, being a parent, you're always gonna kick your own ass, right? You are, yeah. And yeah, but then you know, I think reality hits as well that every person, every mind is their world, right? So I think you probably did do everything you could, right? And did you ever find out what the rot, uh, the the core reason was for his depression? Or? So he had got involved with drugs, man. Okay. That but all heavy, heavy drugs, mm. right? Which kind of it fucked him up. Yeah, right. He wasn't just doing weed, you know, stuff. He started getting into the harder shit a lot more, mm. and so he started tripping on LSD too, you know, heavily, right? Uh, and and so. It, it it started affecting him, you know. We noticed the change when he, you know, it's like anybody that you re, you see it with drugs, man. It started taking him the wrong way, and of course, as 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 a parent, you're like, hey, man, you're fucking up, man. Stop doing this shit. And it's one of those things that sometimes your kids, if you tell them, don't do this shit, it's like adding fuel boom, to the fire. It's, you're adding fuel to the fire, you know. And, and that's one thing that after everything happened, I kind of analyzed what I was doing, and again, man, should have I approached it that route, man? What if I would have not being the hard ass, you know, would that have made a difference? So, like I said, you you play scenarios out, bro, you know. But the drugs is when we started noticing the, the total change of his mood swings up and down. And he started get, getting depressed, you know. And he, you know, he was already over 18. So, it wasn't like I could just, you're going to the freaking doctor. You're going to a psychologist. This. He's a grown once, man. He's, once he's a grown man, you can't, you can't force him to do anything, right. you know. So, you know, because we talked to him, hey, man. Let's go see a psychologist, man, or a therapist or somebody. You're like, nah, nah. So, you know, it, it, it's like I said, is everybody has their own mind. And, you know, to a certain point, you can only guide your kids. You know, I, I learned that from this. 
is you, you, you can't force them to do something. You can only give them a guidance and hope that they, they listen and they flow with it, you know. But ultimately, every, every human being is going to make their own decision, right. you know. And, and, you know, that's one thing that, you know, kind of helped me not be in, a, in a, a serious depression myself was analyzing what had happened and realizing that I think I did everything that I could. And he made the ultimate decision to take the path that he chose, you know. And, you know, you don't agree with it, but it, it happened, you know. And, and as a parent, though, you're still going to kick your ass no matter what yeah. because of the way it happened, you know, how he took his life and stuff. Right. Now, and, and you, we don't have to answer this or not. Now, was it an overdose that caused his death or was it he took his life? He took his life, man. He shot himself. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. he shot himself, man. So, you know, <laughs> and, 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 you know. Again, when when uh, you know when you think about it, it's one of those things. You know, being in the Marine Corps, being in the military, when you see what guns can do, yeah. you know, even though you don't, you know, even though I didn't see it, you already know what a gunshot looks like, what it can do to a body, yeah. and seeing seeing that in your own head, picturing it, that that kind of fucks you up for a little bit, man, because yeah. you you know you, even though I didn't see him, again. Knowing what a round can do and what it what it looks like, I could picture my own son. You know. Now, have you? And I'm not gonna say closure because closure might be the wrong word. Um, what have you done to combat that depression that you carry right now? That because of what happened to your son, right? Like I imagine you kick yourself in the ass. You know, it's I bet it's something that you think about daily. Yeah, it is, man. You know, I think about it daily. But again, I talk to my son, gotcha. you know, I'll get up in the morning, man. And, at, you know, at home, I have my little office and stuff for work. And on the mantle right here, pictures of my mom, my dad, my in-laws and a picture of Steven and stuff. And I'll get up in the morning, man, get my breakfast, go to my computer, you know, tell him good morning. Tell my dad good morning because his pictures up there, too. I'll talk to him, you know, for a little bit and get to work. You know, like I said, I'll, I I'll still get a, you know, a feeling that, man, you know, fuck, you know, I, I can feel myself getting down. But. I'll grab, you know, me and my shepherd, we'll go for a walk, go about a two-mile walk, bro, and I'll talk to him. We'll walk to, you know, where I live at in the woods. I got trails behind my house. We'll walk through the woods. And I'll just talk to him. Hey, man, you know, this is what's going on, bro. Bye, bye, and I'll, you know. It, it, you know, it's like, you know, I lift the weight off of me just by talking to him. Right. And sometimes my dad's the same because I, I miss my dad, you know. And, and even then I can feel like it's my dad's presence that is why I'm feeling like this. Right. And same thing, man. I'll, you know, tell my wife, hey, I'm going to go for a walk. I'll be back. I'll talk with him, Dad, this was going on with life, this was going on with the family and stuff, and it's like, okay, I'm good. So it's kind of like solitude in nature is almost like a recipe for a feel-good kind of, it's a meditation in a way, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, I find that for myself is, like, my medicine as well, dude. Like, just forget the gadgets, yeah. forget all this, like, techno technology bullshit and just go out there, get in the sun, in the shade, whatever, but it's being in nature that, and I think I do the same thing though. Like, you know, I, I haven't lost somebody in my life that close, but it's coming. I know it's coming. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's life. It's going to happen, you know, eventually, you know, hopefully I can outlive my kids. That's, that's my goal. Yeah. But it could happen to anyone. Uh, you know, my parents are of, they're not that old, but you know, their health isn't a hundred percent either. Eventually I'm going to lose one of them too. And I think that's where I would find my peace as well is, and people say, oh, you shouldn't be alone. I say, nah, I, I think, I think it's good to be alone sometimes. Like it is, man. It, it helps me. Like I said, I like, you know, I just go out, man, and I clear my mind. There's nobody else around me. It's just me and my dog walking, man. And I hear the birds, I see the sky and just, I'm just yeah. talking, wow. you know, and it's like, okay, man, I'm good. I, you know, I, I think that's cause I'm not religious and but I'm spiritual, and I'm not sure if that's the same thing or not. I don't think it is. No, I know where you're coming from, because I'm right. the same way. Like I said, you know, I was brought up Catholic. Right. You know, I, I know the church, all this world, but I question, you know. So, you know, I know, I know, like I said, I know there's something out there. What it is, I don't know, but it's some, there is something spiritual, you right. know, yeah. because I have dreamt my dad and my son, and they, you know, they talk to me like, hey, it's okay, the boom, like, you know. They're there, 
you know. And so there is something spiritual in this in this in this life in this yeah. world, right? Yeah. It's just to me there is no. Like I said earlier, it, it's not. I don't know what it is. There's something out there, but you know, it's not just. Hey, I'm not boom, 200 percent Catholic, you know, because I I question, you know, religion itself, right. spirituality. I, I'm probably the biggest questioner in my family, right? Like my immediate family, where, okay, if if that's the way it is, then why why did for example, why, why, why was Abraham going to sacrifice his son for God, right? Like, exactly. Like, and then I start thinking to myself, like, if God appeared to me right now and he said, I want you to go kill your daughters to prove that you fucking love me, I, don't, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, fuck, I couldn't do it. So then that, that story alone makes me question a lot of stuff, right? I'm like... It's what we love the most, right? Like, yeah, you know, you, you lost yours and, and look at the pain, right? Like, yet in biblical times or, or whatever you want to call it, Abraham was going to do that. Yeah. Because, because why? Like, I just don't, I don't get it. And I'm sure there's religious people out there that are going to be like, well, you know, it was God testing him. Yeah. For what? Like, that's not how, I, if I love you, I'm not going to test you that kind of way. Like, yeah. Like, if I have true love for, you, I'm not going to be like, hey, dude, like if you fucking, you love me, like, well, you know, and that's my problem with some of the things. Now, I think religion is good, right? Like, I think it has a lot of good things where people could follow some things and, and really, you know, live yeah. a, a good life. Correct. But the more I read, the more stuff I'm finding, like slavery, uh, you know, rape, yeah, you know, all kinds of shit that was okay, right? And, and it's not okay, right? Like, but then it's in there. Yeah. So that's a whole different story. It, it is, man, because we can get into that, man, big time. Because, I mean, you know, you got to go look at, you know, again, the way you were just, you know, what you were describing again, you go look at one of the Ten Commandments is thou shalt not kill. Yet when the Holy Wars happened, they were killing in the name of God. Right. So why is one of his commandments thou shalt not kill? But then right. you're doing the holy wars in his name right right come on moses went and got these 10 commandments came back down and then automatically said you know what let's go fuck these people up they don't believe in god let's go yeah like destroy them all but keep the virgin to yourself <laughs> it says it in the bible man yes yeah and i'm just like well that so. that can't be good you know like yeah so i think a lot of destruction that's happening in the world is based on that book yeah and now do i believe there's a god yes 100 percent. yeah i believe there's a god I don't know if it's the one they're talking about in the Bible, though. Exactly. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know if it makes sense, but it, it does because so you know, every different religion has a different god. Right. You know, Buddha is the god for the you know for the Buddhists. There's no Buddha is Jesus, and then there's God. Is Buddha is God. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know it, it's one of those. My biggest question back to religion was why if God was God, why didn't they know about him from day one? Right. You right. know, why didn't all these other religions, everybody in the world say there's one God. So we all pray to this one God, you know, yeah. the Indians, they didn't, they, there was a God for everything, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, you know, it's like you said, man, religion can be a topic that we can discuss for days, man. Cause I'm the same way, bro. I'll just, I, I, it's like I tell people, I re, I respect everybody's beliefs right. and their religions i will never hey don't throw that on me because i will i'm good with you talking to me about it man yeah. you know yeah. this is what you believe in right and, and i respect it you know as long as you respect what i believe in we're good brother yeah. you, you can talk to me man i'm not gonna man, I, i'm gonna be like man we're cool bro you know you can talk to me all you want you know and, and i'm gonna listen to you because it's your belief right you I, I think you're one of the first people that even going through this traumatic scenario not scenario but event in your life with your son and you didn't turn to religion. Correct. So a lot of people do that. Yeah. Something drastic happens in their life and it's like, I found Jesus, man. Like, yeah. Like, I don't know if people use it as a feel good mechanism, right? Like, yeah. Oh, the Bible's going to make me feel good. You know, like, is that, is that the answer? You know, I'm, I'm just saying, dude, like, because it's one of those things, man, is, is if, you know, again, like you were talking about, you know, sacrificing your son and stuff like that to me, you know, and the test is like, so my test was, you're taking my son's life that hasn't even lived a full life yet, hasn't right. experienced life. Just what kind of test is that, man? Right. Is, you know, I fucked up big time, ah. and I'm still running around. Right. You've got a kid here who's just starting life, right. 
and then you just end it to test me. Yeah. Okay, so that's where it's the, what kind of God does that? Right. You know, but that's like, you know, when some people will do the, well, what kind of God does that? Right. He, he, and then there's other people that be like, don't question God. Exactly. God knew why he was doing that. Yeah. And I think that's not the right answer. It's not, man. I, I mean, know. fuck, I'm just being honest. Like, I don't think that's the right answer to look at it that way. Correct. To be like, no, that's the way God wanted it. Like, and then if, if you start reading some of these, I think the story keeps going, like, people rebel against God. Yeah. Why? Right? Well, because he's fucking killing everybody, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, it's just, it's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's killed it's more crazy, people in the man. Bible? Satan or God? God. <laughs> By yeah. far. Yeah. Okay, he's got a fucking body count. You, you never, you never hear, the devil was testing you. Uh-uh. The devil did it. Uh-uh. You know, God did it for a reason. Right. Well, goddamn, the, the evil dude ain't doing <laughs> shit for a reason. You know, but <laughs> it, you know, it's one of those things that you know. What is it? Right. And, what and, is it? And dude, I know a lot of religious people, man. And this is not a kick to them. Like, yeah. uh, you know, this is just me thinking, right? Like, yeah. It's, and finally, like, there's someone else who's just as fucked up as I am, right? Like, yeah. But again, you know, I, I don't mind when people are saying, hey, man, you know, we're going to pray for you. I'm good with that, brother. You know, do, you it, know. It's it, hard, it's, bro. Like, it, it's not for me because I respect their yeah. beliefs. And I'm like, okay, man, I'm good with that, brother. Just you question know? some of it. Yeah. Now, my mom's real, like, believes. In, yeah, my mom too, bro. And good for her, man. Like, yeah. I, I think it gives them some type of, like, calmness. Yes purpose in life yeah cool man like you know it's like anything else man what makes you happy and what what makes you tick bro go with it go with it man. that's you yeah. don't let anybody else change yeah. your beliefs yeah. and what you want to do is that's you yeah. be you and, 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 and sometimes i like like i will believe right and I, like i go back and forth with it man like i don't know where i stand anymore right like yeah it's hard because like i got invited to a, a, a retreat and and i i you know Months ago, I was like, yeah, you know, that'd be a good idea. But I've kept more reading and more research, and I'm like, man, like, maybe I'm just not ready because if I went, I'm not sure I'd be there with faith. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. At that point, I would just be yeah. looking like, like just trying to figure out. And, and that might be good too, right? Like, yeah. I, I don't know, but eh, I, either way, man. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's life, man, again. Yeah. It's on on your beliefs, man, and how you how you run with how, what you believe in, man. Yeah. What do you what do you think about afterlife? You think it exists? <sighs> so I don't know, man. I think it does because, like I said, you know, I have dreamt my son and felt him. So I don't know if it's just a dream, but there's a difference between I know that I'm dreaming, and then you know my son talking to me and him. I I feel him. Gotcha. You know, literally feel them. You know, it's not just like how it was just a dream. It was like, man, I, I, I felt, I mean, I could feel the hug. You know, it was just like, like it was there. You know, so. So, so there has to be there, something greater than us, right? Yeah. Guaranteed there is a God. Yeah. I'm not down in that. Correct. Correct. I just don't know if this religious one is the one that they're talking about. I mean, but there has to be more like. Like, like you're saying with dreams, right? Like you can feel it. I think, I think what's happened to us really is we've lost touch with our spiritual selves. Correct. And we're just out here, dude, just fucking out here. And I'm not, but you can't mistake spiritual for religious, right? Like it's two different things. Correct. Because you've been on, on adventures, you know, the American, really in any Indian culture Mm -hmm. they have they believe in the spiritual world Mm -hmm. you know they go into their meditations or stuff like that and they travel to the spiritual world yeah you know so there is something there i've been you know because there's man has lost a lot of what it was really like to to connect with nature and and you know be one with everything Mm -hmm. you know all, all indians you know the mayans the aztecs if you look at their 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 cultures I'm not going to say their religions, their cultures, they were all into the spiritual world, right? into connecting with the spiritual world, you know, and, and it's through nature. Know, it's th- exactly, you know, and, and we, or man has changed all that. They say they've evolved from it. In other words, where, you know, again, they didn't know about God. They didn't know about Jesus. 
they were forced into conversion into believing that. Right. Or they would be know, killed. Or they would be killed. So there was that. You That's know, how Christianity got spread around the world. Exactly. You know, it was forced upon people. Right. So they, you know, the Indians, everybody, they would travel to the, to the spiritual world and connect with the spiritual world. You know, and like you said, you've been there. Yeah. You know, so there is something out there. There is another afterlife, you know. Have you it, thought of? I've thought of it, yeah. you know. So, you know, is, you know, I dabbled, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, But not in, you know, that, that, that deep. I, I, you know? I think it's something everybody should experience. Now, people say, well, you have to take a drug to get there. Not true. I think you can get there through meditation, but I think yeah. meditation will, you know, you got to put the practice in. Yes. So I think meditation is kind of like the PhD in traveling to the spiritual yeah. world. And I think taking a drug like LSD or uh, yeah. psilocybin or DMT is like the cliff notes of it. And you can take a shortcut to get there. Correct. Yeah. So it's like you're taking the speed pass at Disney World. Right. You know, you're going to get up there really quick, but um, it's yeah. going to be short lived. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the only way I've done it so far. And it sparked a lot of curiosity in me to, to research a lot. I'm not going to say it's like turned me away from religion because I think I've always thought this way. Like I've always questioned why or the what's and well, why was it done that way? You know, and, you know, and even my mom, my mom will get on me, man. Like, don't you talk like that? Don't you say that? You know, like I wonder if like a lot of people are following religion for fear that they're going to go into this lake of fire. Right. Yeah. Like. And that's it. They do it at, you know, I'm not saying everybody like, yeah, I, I, like, no, it's like anything else out there, man. Some people do because of that fear. Right. And some people do because that is their, their, their belief in their yeah, faith. Yeah. yeah. And, and I can respect that more. Exactly. I can respect the faith part. more. Exactly. I, I, I do not like the ones that are like, well, I'm going to go to church just in case. Yeah. Like, nah, nah, dude, that's not how the fuck you, know. you should be like doing that, you know? And, and that's, so that's why I don't go to church because yeah. I feel I would be doing that. Does so, that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that's where going to church, right? So when Jesus was around, there was no church. Mm -hmm. He prayed wherever he stopped to pray. So why do I have to go to church? If I want to pray, why can't I just stop oh, and pray get, right here? You got to give 10%, baby. Exactly. You know, <laughs> when, when, when Jesus was around, there was no A put into the collection basket. You know, you go look at all these pastors from Lake, you know, whatever, never. How is this guy living with millions, bro, yeah. off of religion? He's got two private jets. Exactly. And a helicopter so you could preach yeah. and you south got, side of Houston and then the north side of Houston. You, you got the people that take advantage of those that want to get brainwashed. Yeah. It's my belief in that. Yeah, and, you and know. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's an unpopular opinion, but I think more and more people are waking up to questioning things. Yeah. Not so much like, okay, I, I'll give it to you this way. Some people believe and they base their life on the Bible. Correct. How many times have they read that thing? Yeah. In its entirety. All of it. Yeah. With understanding. Not and too many people. Not too many people. And then, okay, you're reading the condensed version of the Bible that was put out. What happens to all these other books that, that supposedly exist out there that were, oh, we're not going to put that in the Bible. Oh, no, we're not going to put that. No, we don't want them to see that. You right. know. Right. Because it was, it was a bunch of writings. Exactly. That were put together. Correct. And I'm sure there was like a, a group of elites. People, maybe they're like, okay, you know, we're going to put these, 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 and this is what we're going to put in it. We're going to leave this out, out, out. I think the Vatican maybe is where they hold a bunch of the stuff that we don't know. Correct. Who you know, knows, man? You know, yeah. It, it's, you know, religion is a topic that can go <laughs> on forever, bro. And, you know? you know, it's cool to, and I'm not down in, like, I don't care what you believe in, man. If you Correct. believe in fucking aliens and that's what you were, good on you, man. Yeah. I believe we're the fucking aliens, you know, but, you know, that's just me. And, yeah, I mean, you know, that's in the history that that's in the history of the American Indian too and stuff, man. With the with the with the uh, with the uh, sky visitors that they called them, mm -hmm. you know, is is man man wants to say they don't exist, but yet every culture out there is based on the star beings brought knowledge to us. So and so brought knowledge to us. There's you know there's a lot of stuff out there that that's why I question stuff is if you go back and and, and look at all that, it's not just the American Indian. Again, the Aztecs. The uh, Peru, India, China, everybody yeah. was, hey, the this being brought us, knowledge. you know, this knowledge, you know. So what's not to say that we weren't put here by somebody else? Right. You know, it wasn't a God. It was an alien that dropped us here. Maybe. And experimented saying, boom, there's man. That's the Anunnaki okay. story. Exactly. Have you have you got into the Anunnaki? Yes. Story? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah we're kind of the yeah, same. Yeah, man. I, I just recently started studying that part of it or researching really, not studying, yeah. but. 
it's fascinating to say the least, right? Like how that story kind of, fuck it, kind of makes sense, right? Like, yeah. Like in a way, right? I'm not saying I believe, I don't know what the fuck I believe in anymore. Exactly. I, I don't either, but I'm open to everything right, because, you know, I'm not just going to settle. If, you know, if it's something that is all over the world, again, like I said, like the sky beings, it, it wasn't just this local right here. Right. Da, da, da. A whole fucking a culture. Whole culture Civilization. Dude, of, man, the sky beings brought us this. I mean, you got a question of how were the pyramids built with precise cuts the way they're built that they can't do right now without machinery. They can't even do it with machinery. I don't they, think. they, they didn't have it. How were the fuck did, you know, yeah. you know, yeah, all those questions are out there. Yeah. I, I wonder if it was, maybe they were technologically advanced, but in ways that we're not. And then we lost all that through time and, you know, shit that happened on earth. And I mean, what happened to these people? Where are them? Where did they go? Where the fuck did they go? Yeah. Did they vanish or what the fuck? Right. Like, yeah. They just up and left. Maybe they were taken by the sky gods. I mean, fuck, that's a whole different deal, it's, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of stuff out there, man, that, you know. That's a fucking rabbit hole that I go down every now and then, dude. Right, man, I'm the same way, bro. God. So we could have this conversation for days if you wanted to, bro. <laughs> you know, because I'm the same way, man. What do you do for hobbies, man? Man, for hobbies, bro, car, man. 1967 Camaro, brother. Fuck. That's what I do for hobbies, man. And then also, you know, spend as much time as I can with my kids, you know. One of the one of the things that I look at, again, going back to to my older kids, you know, I've had two marriages, got three kids, three older kids with my first wife and two younger kids. You know, and one of the things that 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 I, I, I felt guilty about was with my older kids. I thought giving them everything as much as possible was the way to go. So I worked and I worked and I worked. Now I was trying to get ahead, too, but I spent more time working. Right. So I didn't get to really experience, you know, their them growing up. You know, I coached I coached their basketball teams for a while when they were doing at YMCA basketball and stuff like that. But to me, I didn't spend the time that I should have spent with them. And that was one of the things that I always questioned myself about, too, was, man, you know, if, if I would have spent more time with him when he was younger, this might not have happened. And I would have seen it maybe sooner if it was there before the drugs. But that was one of the things that pushed me. Right. So like now. My two youngest kids, who are 16 and 14, are in bandit school and stuff, right? And, you know, they, they go with the football team to all the games and stuff. So I volunteer. You know, I'm basically I'm the guy who pulls the, the, the band stuff to all the football games and stuff, man. And I interact with them, you know, see them, you know, stuff like that, spend more time with them. You know, see them eat, in their full element, right? Like, yeah, in their full element and stuff, man. And, and so, you know, that's another one of my hobbies is trying to make sure that I, I do get to see my kids grow up yeah. and stuff, man. Badass. You know, uh, pero again – which is one of my, man, it's, it's my privilege, man, to see my girls. Just, yeah. And, you know, and, and time flies, bro. Like I said, man, time, boom. I mean, my, my two youngest are 14 and 16, you know, and, and just a couple of years ago they were down here. And now I'm like, man, you know, where's, where's the time going? You know, even though I'm spending time with it, you don't, for some reason it's just like, oh, shit. Got any grandkids? What's that? I got two grandkids, man. Really? Yeah. I didn't Michael know that. and Alex, man. I got two yeah. grandkids, two boys, man. My oldest daughter, you know, two grandkids, man. And uh, they are they are the bomb, man. So do There's you do you love grandkids more than your kids? Oh, oh man, yeah. They don't, yeah. you know, they don't, yeah. <laughs> and it's true, bro. Once you become a a, a grandparent, brother, there's Fuck no. Fuck them kids. I want yeah. my grandkids. <laughs> Yo, you know, you'll tear your kids up. Bah, bah. Your grandkids come over and it's like, ah, da, da, you know, bah, they're good. They're good. You know? And now I understand where my parents came from when my kids were younger and stuff. You know, we'd come to the house. Mom, don't give them this. Mom, don't give them that. My dad was like, ah, they're at my house. They can have whatever they want. It's the same way, man. You know, they come to the house. Hey, man, we're going bowling. We're going to the arcade. Y'all want ice cream. Let's go. You know, dude, boom. my dad gives my girls ice cream for breakfast, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fucking does uh, that. You know? uh, same way, bro. My my grandkids would come over. To, they spend the weekend. Papa, we have donuts. Ah, right, let's go. Let me go to Shipley's. I'll be yeah, back. I'll be right back. Yeah, <laughs> you know. All of a sudden, my dad got money for fucking ice cream, McDonald's. Man. Oh yeah, dude. You know, growing up, we asked for stuff. Hey, there ain't no money for that. Mm -mm. Grandkids, oh, got you. I got mm, you. Let's go. I don't know if that motherfucker put it on a credit card. I don't know what he does, right? But he's got money now, yeah. right? <laughs> Yep. Yeah, man. It's Grand, cool, man. Grandkids are totally different. Totally different life, man. It's, it's so you cool know? to see my dad interact with with uh, with my daughters and and my nephew. Right, like he's a he's a whole different fucking person, bro. Like, yeah, it's not the hard ass, you know. Like, 
not the hard ass you know like especially yeah. now when my girls oh man they run all over that man like, yeah I, you know there's pictures of me i'm laying on the ground and my grandkids walking all over the top of me dressed like batman and stuff my kids were like man we just jumped on you you just tore us up <laughs> i got my grandkids standing on top of me looking like he's batman and stuff <laughs> It's so awesome. Dude. Yeah, man. So it's a different, you know, it's a totally different, uh, you know, different life with grandkids, man. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do I see myself in 10 years, man? I see myself, hopefully, man, sitting retired somewhere, brother. Yeah. Working on more cars and traveling this world. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You're staying in Houston, but you want to travel. Yeah. Well, trying to get out, you know, a little bit further. So, like, right now I live in, in the Woodlands where when I moved out there about 15 years ago. It was nothing. It was nothing. It was quiet. Now... Everybody's Boom, everything getting out there. So, you know, my goal is to retire at some point, and I want to try to get a little land somewhere. I said, I, I've already got a picture of my house. Build me a little three-bedroom house with about a five-car garage, you know. I've got a picture of what I want to be doing, man. Yeah. But then I want to be traveling, too. You know, I want to see more of the world, yeah. you know. Uh, I love to travel, yeah. you know. And, 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 you know, I've gotten to, got to, and then, you know, I just want to do a lot more where, fuck, I only got, I, I got a week vacation. I got to get back. I want to. Let's go. I don't know. I'll be gone for a month. I'll be back. Yeah. 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 What do you want to hit, man? Like, what's uh, what's your dream spot? So my dream spot, actually, man, is Switzerland, bro. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Switzerland, man. Up in the Swiss Alps and stuff, man. You know, I, 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 that's what I really, you know, want to hit. Uh, what was on my top bucket list for the longest time, bro, pre-COVID, was the Great Wall of China. But when for COVID, I was like, ha! <laughs> That's off the list, girl. Nah, not going there. And, and, and funny because when COVID hit, I was turning 50, right? Mm. And my wife was going to plan the trip for us to, to China, take me to go see the Great Wall of China. And then COVID hit, you know, and after that, I was like, mm -mm. Uh, mm. leave it alone. Yeah. I ain't going there. After all. Yeah. Ready for another one? Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me get him. Let me get him. Oh, shit. Somebody get a can wrench. Ooh. I would. I would suggest. Thank you, sir. The Maldives, if you can get there. The Maldives? And with your, if yeah. You know, take, take your you know, significant other. Just y'all two. That. Well, if, if you're into the beach, right? Like, some people aren't. Mm. I'm into everything, bro. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. You know. What places have you been to? Man, uh, so, been to Costa Rica. Costa Rica's cool. I don't know if you've been to Costa Rica, I man. Just came Costa back. Rica's, yeah. yeah, that's a badass place to go to, man. I was no. in Tamarindo. Was that? I was in Tamarindo. Okay. Okay. It's the, so, you know, uh, in the military, uh, I hit Iwakuni for on, on a pump, right? Where's in Japan. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So we, we were on a pump for that and stuff, man. But like really international, international, I haven't hit nothing yet. That's why I want to travel. Damn it. Travel, yeah, you got to go, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, but oh, that's my goal, man, is to go yeah. be gone, man. That's, and, that's, that's you know. kind of where I see myself too, right? So I'm going to get my girls to the age where they're going to college, hopefully. Yeah. Um, you know, I am 100%. On my V8, right? So yeah. Their school's taken care of. Yeah. Thank God, you know. I'm working on that right now, too. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Get that shit taken care of. Oh, I'm, 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 you know, I just came from a VA's appointment two weeks ago, man, to keep that process going and stuff, yeah, man. But, oh, that's my goal, you yeah. know. They'll get Chapter 35. You get 100%. Yeah. Chapter 35 pays them, like, I think it's bar rate, maybe, yep. for, for Houston or whatever, wherever they attend. And that goes for 48 months. And then after that, they stay in Texas. Each individual kid gets a Hazelwood Act. Yeah, the Hazelwood. Yes. Fuck, dude. I mean, so that, in theory, puts them in fucking a four-year college degree, right? Yeah. And if they want to go into, like, a doctorate or a lawyer, whatever the fuck they want to do. Yeah. Dude. So, like, my uh, my uh, my youngest my youngest son, right, he's, you know, uh, again, you know, when I was his age, I wasn't even thinking about school, you know. He's already, he wants, his goal is UT, you nice. know. So, he's a junior this year. Next year, he's a senior, but he wants to go to UT. Um, he's a lot like his mom, really reserved, quiet, laid back, you know. Uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, is a lot like me. Just party, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I graduate high school. I want to go pack, pack Europe, kind of yeah. stuff, you know. So, yeah, you know. So, what do you think about that? You think it's? I'm all for it. Yeah. If my girls turn 18 and they're like, you know what, I'm gonna go fucking travel for a year or two. In my opinion. Yeah. And I'm not sure their mom's gonna say the same thing, but me, fuck it. Oh, uh, you know. Like, I'm I'm the same way, bro. You know, I'm not. You know, I, I'm the same. Hey, this was what she wants to do, but. What's your plan? Right. All right. Yeah. You want to go pack, pack Europe for a year or whatever. What's your plan? Right. You know, don't just, okay, I'm back from Europe. Now I need to figure it out. Cool if you want to do that, but kind of put a plan together. Yeah. You know, because that's one thing that I learned when I left here was if you put a plan together, 
life a little bit smoother. Oh, yeah. You know, unless you shoot, shoot from the hip, it gets a little harder, I mean, a little I mean, rough, because that's how I grew up, shooting from the hip. And it took me quite a long time to get to where I'm at, you know. Dude, I'm 38 still shooting from the hip. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, but you make it work, bro. Yeah, I mean, but that's you know, me. That's you. Yeah. You know, I don't fucking recommend this lifestyle for fucking Yo. nobody, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I've been in every fucking industry you can think of. I've, I've been in the military. I've been a cop. I've been a fucking truck driver. I've been a fucking... Uh, in the NDT field, I've done Uber, Amazon. I fucking work construction. I mean, fuck you, name it. I, I've I've been yeah. in it. I'm not the fucking best at anything, but yeah. I fucking have done it all, right? But I do not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't recommend anybody doing the shit that I do because it's not. It's not for everybody. It's dude. not, man. Like, you know, I live a fucking very different lifestyle than most. But I, it's me. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. But I fucking wouldn't recommend it if you're like gonna be like oh like if you got anxiety or man my lifestyle is not for you man because i i may be in fucking fuck i could be in fucking Colombia next month i don't fucking know right yeah i may just fucking go i could be in fucking vietnam by fucking november for a month like i you know it's what the fucking you know it's how it goes for me you know that that's it's one of the things you know myself man is is i'm a i'm a shoot from the hip you know a lot of stuff still you know it took my wife and she, she probably still hasn't adjusted to my ass and shit, man. But you know, how long you been married now? She's uh, so me. And my, well, married. We've been married uh, 15, 15 years, right? Going on sixteen years. Uh, November the eighteenth uh, will be our anniversary. Damn. And but we've been together twenty years. Damn. Right. Uh, and and I'm I'm a again shoot from the hip. You know, I don't like. We're gonna. I'm gonna throw this on the calendar. My wife's about. Hey, put this on the calendar. Put that on the calendar. Da 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 da. I'm gonna like. Boom. Let's roll and mm-hmm. you know, let's do this, you know. And uh, again, my son is like that. You know, he he likes to be, you know. I like to see stuff on the calendar, and my daughter's like me, like give eh, a fuck whatever. about the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, God damn, that's gonna be the one that's gonna. Yeah, uh, my you little know. my little one, dude. Yeah, my, my my fucking youngest man. God, God bless her heart, man. Yeah, she is crazy, bro. Yeah, man. But, you, it's, know, you know, I wouldn't have any other way, man. Like, but it's life, you know. Yeah. But but I do like I said, I tell my kids is man if you want to live a good life, structure it, you know, have a plan, yeah. you know. Because I tell them that's I, you know like I've got two two younger brothers and a little sister, you know. Is is we're four. I'm the oldest, and I tell everybody I say my three youngest I all have college degrees, you know, and I don't, yeah. you know. I was the rock, you know, and I tell everybody they've got their lives settled at a way younger age than I did. I said, and it took me a long time to get to where I'm at. And I t- and I tell them, I tell my kids, I took the the, the rough road right, the to hard, where I'm at, the hard, hard road. Yeah. I said the easy route is, you know, school, you know, and just hard work. And I tell my kids, and it it doesn't matter what job you do, as long as you do it right. I said you can be a fucking garbage man. I said do your job right. right. I said you know every company, no matter where you go, you can advance if you want to. Don't be stuck in one spot. I said you know. Again, where I work at, it was all union. You know, it was structured, but I still wanted to learn. So, you know, if I if I came to a job, I did something, and if something was fucked up beyond but what I did, they'd be like, ah, leave it alone, man, call this crew, and let them do it. That crew would show up, but I'd be like, hey, man, show me what you're doing, bro. Show me what you're doing. I learned that. Boom, I moved over to that crew. Mm. And I learned what they were doing. The same thing, man. We stopped here, bro. So-and-so was responsible from here. They show up. Show me what you're doing, you know. And and I start off. I was the guy going up these telephone poles, putting up wire, man, pulling cables across, going in the shutting down the street, pissing people off by shutting off the lanes, going in the underground, coming out of the you know, cutting out of a manhole, smelling like ass because it's nasty down there and stuff, man. Just grunting, yeah. right? To sitting at behind the desk, bro, fucking, based on top of the food chain, yeah. you know. Handing those guys work and stuff, man. I just sit behind the desk all day looking pretty. Right, but somebody you know? that doesn't know you would be like, oh, yeah, you got it easy. No, yeah, mother exactly. Fucker. I do now. Yeah, and I tell people, I say, you know what? I came from where those guys came yeah. from, you know, and, and I still keep in touch with all of those guys. Yeah. You know, I don't, I didn't forget where I came from. Yeah. You know, it's like, man, I hang out with them. I know guys that are like, man, and they're beneath me now, bro. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. We started there, bro. Yeah. You know, don't forget where you came from, man. It's yeah. just, you know, you just make a better living than they do, man. But you started right there. Don't right. don't beneath them. They don't put them beneath you. Yeah. You know, you were there at one point, man. You know, as I tell my kids, is treat everybody like an equal, man. No matter what they do for a living, they do. If you're VP from over here, and that's the trash man, 
talk to him. Yeah. Like where I work at my, you know, my company, bro. Clean lady comes through. Como está? You know, I talk to him like it's cool, man. The other guys are like, yeah. yeah, you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, what's going on? I talk to everybody, man. I'm laid back and chilled, man. You know, everybody's an equal, bro. We're just human beings, and that's it. Right. There's there's supervisors, and there's leaders. Yes. And it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing, bro. And 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 so like my son is a section lead for his his section, and I tell him. I said, there's a difference between being a, su- uh, a, a supervisor, a manager, and being a leader. Mm-hmm. I said, there's, there's a difference. Mm-hmm. I said, a supervisor is going to come out and ba da 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 A leader is going to lead by example. What you tell them to do, you've already done it, and you still do it. Mm-hmm. Don't just expect them to, boom, and show them. Don't expect them to know. That's 100 fucking percent yeah. Marine Corps. Show too, them. Man. You know, it is just because they got to a point doesn't mean they know it. You need to make sure they know it, and if they don't, you need to show them. Yeah, sure. All right, because one day, somebody's you're going to be responsible for picking who's going to take your spot for something, no. and you want to be able to say, "I can pick anybody that's un- that's worked with me that, to step up." Yeah. It's like lead by example, man. You know, don't just you know, bah. It's like yeah. what I what you're doing, I've done, yeah. and I'm going to show you how to do that if you're not sure how to do it. You know, and that's you know one of my theories in life is just treat everybody like a human being. And Pass on your knowledge, man, best you can. Yeah, I was gonna ask you for uh, no, no autographs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Any advice for younger guys? But I think I think you've hit it on the on the spot right there, man. Kind of kind of the way you've you've just said it in these past like however long we've been talking, right? Like it's just do the best, you know. And and, and Be- if you're in a leadership spot. Don't forget where you come from, right? Like, yeah, I think that's a and, big fucking and deal. be a human being. You know what, man? I'll give you an example. A couple of weeks ago, me and a buddy of mine were going to a job off of 249, fucking headed up towards Waller, right? 240 and rolling. There's a car broke down on the side of the road. There's two ladies sitting there, flat tire, bro, right? Everybody's pass by him. And I'm at work. I'm at my work car. I pull over. Boom. Back it up. He's like, man, what are you doing, bro? I said, lady needs some help, man. I think they got a flat tire. Let's go see what's going on. We back up. He goes, man, what if da-da-da? I said, Dude, you know what? It's a risk I'm going to Yeah, as I told you, it's a risk I'm going to take. If not, I'm going to help somebody out. Yeah. Go back there, man. Help them change their tire. Send them on their way. You know? Excuse me. You don't see that, man. You don't see people just, you know what? Let me see what's going on right here. You know? When I'm with somebody else, like if I was with you and I'd have done that, I'd have been like, look, bro, because I'm usually packing. Mm-hmm. So regardless, I'm like, look, man. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Or, hey, you know, let me go back here. Stay behind me a little bit. Something breaks off. You got my back. Right. You know. Why they're yeah. going to help these people out, we're going to put somebody on a T-shirt. Exactly. Right. But you know what? I, I You know, <laughs> it, it's you don't see somebody just pulling over to help somebody, man. It's, yeah. You know, got a flat tire, bro. You know, you, you don't see like stuff like that. And I was, you know, I was told him, I said, hey, man, I'm just helping somebody out, bro. Yeah. No. You know, sometimes you just know. Yeah. Like, and I don't blame them sometimes. Like, I know there's a lot of fucking setups out here, but. Yeah, there is. But, you know, that's just, like you said, man, that's a risk you're willing to take, right? Yeah. And if you know what you got going on for yourself and you know you can protect yourself, yeah, you're more capable of helping others. Because if shit goes south, well, you know what? Okay, we'll take care of it if it does, man. Like, yeah. that's just the way it's meant to be then, you know? Yep. Versus like, nah, fuck them. You know, I'm the same way. Like, I just can't. If someone needs help, man, I got to help them. Yeah. You know, whether that's talking, helping, working with, whatever it takes, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of guy as well, and. I don't know if that I think that's the Marine Corps in me, right? Like it's just like fuck it, man. Like help as many people as you can. We used to have this thing where I don't know if it was no, because this I think General Mattis put this one out uh, in our you know while we were doing our tours. No better friend, no worse enemy, right? Like so, if you're a friend of mine, like fucking do anything for you, but you come against me, like I'm the worst motherfucker you want to have. Oh yeah, you know, like I truly embody that, like, and that made sense to me. Fuck around and find out. Yeah, like. But, you know, I don't look for anything, man. Like, now that I got kids, man, I, I seriously want to just be fucking neutral with everything, just calm. and. Yeah, back like, in my younger years, man, I, I, I would get froggy really quick. <laughs> now it's no like, more, man. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, we'll yeah. chill. You yeah. know, but yeah. And chingazos man. hurt, bro. They hurt, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah. I may have it in me, como dice la canción, one more time, yeah. but it's going to hurt yeah. afterwards. Toby Keith, what he said, he said, <laughs> I ain't as good as I once was. Yeah. You know. But I'm as good once as I ever was. Yeah. Right? But after that, I'm be like, oh. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. No. I'm. Those days are done for me as well, man. Like, cause everybody's. You don't know what. This guy may have had a fight with with whoever, man, and then 
they, they're not going to think twice to kill you. They're not, bro. You know, they're and then, not. And then what happens to my fucking family, my kids, you know, like, yeah. who raises them? Yeah. You know, oh, fuck that. And it's true, man. You know, there's scenarios where being in the military, though, too, man, you, you kind of, you scope things out, man. You're always on the lookout regardless. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you know, you got your eyes, like I said, man, you got head, your head on a swivel. You're always looking. You know, and, and sometimes you'll realize, nah, this ain't the situation, bro. Let me keep rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that's one of the things, too, man, is just, you know, judgment. I guess you got to feel it, too, man, your own judgment, too. Yeah, man. yeah. I think, you know, I think I've, as you, I think experience is what helps, right? Like, yeah. Like, fuck, I'm a better person than I was 20 years ago. For oh, sure. I definitely am, dude. <laughs> I definitely am, man. You know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, because, yeah. yeah, like I said, man, my younger years, man, were some, Crazy years, man. Yeah, you know, stealing cars, just fuck. all kind of shit. I didn't care, man. You know, and it's like again, I said, you know, didn't have a plan until, you know, like I said, walked in that recruiting station, signed a paper, man, and that turned it around, man. Yeah, I bet, you know, man. so it's it's it helped out, man. It it totally did change my life, man. And you know, you get people that'll ask you, you know, like I've got a, a, a my brother, his nephew just joined, right, and they're like, man, you think it's the right thing? I said, you know what? I think everybody should experience it, you know. It, it's it's good for for especially the Hispanic culture, man. That's so dependent on parents and stuff. is It's good for you to experience being away from from everybody, from everything, yeah, and from everything. that makes you realize, shit, I got to grow up. Yeah, this is what it's like to be on your own, yeah. you know. Because I, I know, you know, I have family members that no, you're going to school here. You're not gonna go. No, no, you're gonna stay close to home. Da da da. da. Man, let them do what they want to do, you yeah. know. Let them you got to you, you got to let them live, man, you know. You're not always going to be there, you know. Yeah. So you got to just let them live. You know, yeah. let them experience life. Yeah. You know, if that's what they want to do, you know, let them roll. Yeah. I, I go back to my like sometimes you know I hear I drive Uber now, right? Sometimes and this younger crowd gets in and I'm thinking to myself, man, there's there's this 21-year-old guy in the back seat and he's complaining about whatever he's complaining about, right? And I'm like, fuck, man. When I was 21, I'm a squad leader. Yeah. <laughs> on my third pump, you know, there's a lot of shit going on. And I'm like, but that's just the life that I chose to live, right? Yeah. Like, and I can't down the guy, like, for being 21 and complaining about how hot Houston is, right? Like, I'm thinking, like, fuck. Try being, <laughs> hey, try, try, try being, try being 21. We just partied all night mm. till four in the morning. Five o'clock is PT, three miles, three mile run. Let's run. We're oh. drunk than skunks, but we're on it. Oh, and you just don't you, know, you just keep going, man. You just keep like, going, man. You just push through it. Fuck, I turned 21 in Iraq. On post. I remember that. I never forget it. I was 29 Palms when I turned 21, bro. Uh, we were doing a CAC mm -hmm. in 29 Palms, right? And I remember uh, how we were motor T. We had, we had the motor pool. Boom, nighttime. One of the guys, you know, of course, when we were on a CAC, there was no drinking. Da -da -da. Well, one of the guys in our, in our unit was driving the CO around. So, you know, CO was staying in on base, on base, you know. So he goes to drop CO off, picks up a case of beer on the way back. So, boom, three of us drowning a case of beer. He drives back out because he's got CO, he's got clearance. The, hey, the CO is calling, boom, he goes back out, gets another 24 pack, boom, we get lit up, bro. Two o'clock in the morning, man, I'm hammered, nice. laying in the rack, and all of a sudden I feel the rack shaking. And I'm thinking, these clowns are fucking with me, right? I'm like, man, cut the fucking shit out. And everybody's like, hey, you know, fucking sit up. And it's a fucking earthquake. Oh, shit. 21 years old, I was a f drunk with the earthquake going on. <laughs> not giving a fuck. No, not giving any fucks, man. Dude, we crash landed. Well, crash landed. I don't know if it was a crash land, but so we're on a fucking flight back from Iraq on my one, two, on my third pump. Yeah, my third pump. Was it third? Yeah, it was third one. And the fucking plane landing gear was all fucked up. The flaps that make it fucking stop weren't fucking working. <laughs> So, like, we had a crash land in, I think it was New Hampshire. and But it wasn't, like, a crash landing where, like, we're going to fucking die, right? But, like, we're all fucked up. We just got, like, we had a layover in Germany, like, to get refueled. Yeah. And, like, we fucking. Slamming them. Slamming them back. So, like, all oh, the Marines are fucked up. And you see the flight attendants, man, they're, like, bracing for impact. And they're crying and shit. And, like, Marines aren't even buckled in. <laughs> fucking. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. You know, like, and this fucking plane lands at, like. Speeds it shouldn't land, but the, guy, the pilot fucking made it work, man. And, and it just goes to show you, man, like, yeah, when you're in that world, man, you, you yeah, don't give a fuck, fuck man. man. I remember, man, being a CH-46, a helo, man. 
and fucking smoking. And the crew's like, bro, if it ain't smoking, that's when you got to worry about it. <laughs> if it's smoking, you're good. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Inside it. Inside is smoking up a storm, man. But it was a blast, bro. You know, yeah. so I tell people, I do it all over again, man. Yeah. Like you said, man, it was, it was, it was hilarious. It was good. It was fun. When you think about it afterwards, you're like, ah, fucking shit. Yeah. Marine Corps is a good place to be from. Just not a good place to really be at sometimes. You yeah. Know? Like it's yeah. good to have done it. Yeah. But while you're doing it, it's like, man, this is sometimes we're stupid times. Yeah. Crazy shit. So any final thoughts, man, so we can close this thing out? Anything you want to tell anybody who's watching or maybe you got a message or, you know. Man, I just, again, going back to uh, to my son. Listen to your kids, talk to your kids, be there for your kids. You know, it's not always good to be, you know, strict with your kids. You know, listen to them, hear their side of the story, you know, and just really observe what they're telling you because there could be a message there that you're not listening to if you're just being a jackass and being a hard ass. You know, so listen to your kids and absorb what they're telling you and listen. Again, listen to that message because sometimes there's something under there that you're not hearing. You know, so just be be a parent, but also be a friend to a certain point that listen to what they're telling you. Gotcha. And just soak it in. You know, before you make a decision, you really just think about what they just told you. You know, maybe something underlying that you're not you're not really hearing when you're you're in the heat of the moment that you're pissed off. You know, when you set them to that room, sit down and listen to that conversation, replay it. You know, because it can make a difference. Yeah, I'll tell you this though, even in everything you've been through and what's happened to you, what happened to your son. I don't doubt for a second that you didn't do everything you could. Like, I know you did. Yep. Like, don't. And, yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. It happened, right? Like, you can't change it. Like, no one can change it. Yes. It, it's done. But I think it took a lot of courage to talk about it. I'm not sure if you've talked to anybody about it, to be honest. No. This is the first time that, you know, wow. we just discuss it to, to discuss it, something like that. You know, so yeah, I appreciate you opening up with me to really give this message to those that are watching, even if it's just one fucking person that watches it and that can relate to it or can understand the message you're sending out. Our work is done, in yeah. my opinion, right? Like if we can get just one person to be like, you know what? That dude's right. I'm not going to be such a hard ass. Let me start actually listening to my kids I'm not saying you didn't do it right you're yeah. saying you know just pay more attention more exactly be more okay with being a bit of a friend right yes yeah i think that's a good message to put out there for for there's a lot of fathers and mothers out here that are dealing with shit like that with yep. kids that are maybe going through something similar um so i appreciate that so much and i appreciate you the time and the fucking confidence to, or I don't know what to even fucking call it, man. I respect you a lot for that. I think it's badass that, that you would come and, and put your message and your story out, man. Yeah. And, I, and I do appreciate it. Well, right back at you, man. You know, what you're doing, I appreciate it, man, because you, you, you're giving somebody the opportunity to express themselves without having to worry about anything, man. It's just sitting across from each other, shooting the shit and just talking about life. Yeah. You know, you know, a lot of your podcasts, you know, I've watched them all, man. And every one of them has a message, man. If everybody, you know, if you haven't watched this podcast, watch them, you listen to them, the, the conversations that he has with everybody, the, the, you know, the stories that everybody shares are, are deep, you know, cause everybody's got a story to tell, Fuck yeah, you know, does. and you give us an opportunity to tell our story, man. So, Keep it up, brother, you know, Thank you, man. and if you haven't watched, you know, Open Road Podcast, that's the man right there, you Thank know, you, he makes it happen. You know, if you want to be on the show, reach out to him because he, he's going to make it happen. I appreciate it, Andres. Thank I appreciate you. it, and I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, yeah, man. Thank you so much, bro. You are, bro. Thank you, bro. All right, man.